In 2016, Professor Ari Weismann received the Sobeck Research Award for outstanding achievements in the field of MS. Now, in 2022, MS TV wants to know what new knowledge he has gained on MS. Hi to Ari in Mainz. Hi, so my name is Ari Weismann and I am director in the Institute of Molecular Medicine here in the University of Medicine of Mainz. I'm uh, originally Brazilian and Israeli, but live already for a very long time uh, in Germany. And my research uh, focus on the study of mechanisms that lead to uh, multiple sclerosis. Ari, there are two very interesting topics you're working on. One is the blood-brain barrier and the other is the connection between brain and gut. Could you tell us about that? So, yeah, thank you very much for this uh, question. Those are indeed two topics that we are very interested in the lab. So uh, as far as uh, the blood-brain barrier goes, um, we are very much interested to understand how inflammation affects this, uh, this structure. So the blood-brain barrier, I guess, as many people know, is what uh, prevents from cells to enter freely from the blood into the brain and the spinal cord, because this could be harmful if too many cells go in. I mean, they need to go in, because otherwise there, there's no control of infections or cancer, but they should be under check. And uh, what we are trying to understand is, is what leads to the bridging of the blood-brain barrier, namely what leads to the blood-brain barrier, so to say, opening uh, in the case of multiple sclerosis, And we are especially interested to investigate uh, uh, factors that are produced by immune cells. And one of those is IL-1, so interleukin-1, that is produced by cells of the immune system. And there we could show um, quite recently that uh, the blood-brain barrier structure itself uh, needs to respond to this uh, cytokine in order to open for the entry of cells. And what we have done in animals is to um, remove the receptor, so, so the molecule that respond to this uh, factor from the blood-brain barrier cells, but only from them. And uh, we could see that those animals are now less susceptible to the disease. So theoretically, this could lead to um, new therapies that would uh, keep the blood-brain barrier structure Uh, intact. And um, another um, uh, interesting study that we are doing now, and we are summarizing that for publication, is that we have uh, induced a certain mutation in the blood-brain barrier of animals that lead to very strong uh, response as if there is inflammation occurring in the animals. And we could see that that also leads to a bridging of the blood-brain barrier. And we are investigating now new molecules that we have uh, identified that are important for the entry of immune cells into the brain and the spinal cord. And the hope in this way to be able to pinpoint new targets that can possibly lead to, let's say, a therapy that will prevent entering of autoreactive immune cells into the brain and the spinal cord, but allowing other cells that are important in the normal um, immune responses in the brain to enter. The other question that you asked me is about the, the link between the gut and the brain, and this is a very hot topic. And uh, this also involves very much what's called the microbiome. And the microbiome is all those uh, bugs, uh, mostly bacteria, but also yeast, for example, that we have either in our gut or on the skin, in our lungs, everything that is open to the outside. And we have uh, investigated using another uh, mouse model with a certain mutation. I won't go into too many details, But we could find that those animals that were completely resistant for the disease model of multiple sclerosis were so resistant because their gut microbiome was changed. So we could identify a very strong link between the consistency of the bacteria in the gut and the susceptibility to the disease. And now we are continuing that we published last year, and now we are trying to understand the exact mechanism that leads to that. Thank you very much. 
the title of your Sobek lecture this year is uh, whether um, vaccination against MS is conceivable. That's my question now. Is it conceivable? Yeah, you know, it's it's also a question about what is vaccination. So um, we are used to vaccination against uh, viruses, for example, where uh, people are, you know, normal normal life people, they get a certain vaccine that will protect them against um, against the virus if they will be infected. With MS patients, it's different because you do not want to treat healthy people. You want only to treat the the patients themselves. So we, is that also considered a vaccination? So some con call it a vaccination because it's basically the same principle. So what we have shown last year in a paper together with uh, Ugo Zahin from uh, BioNTech is that we can use exactly the same technology that they have used uh, for their vaccination. And very recently, as everybody now in the world knows, the vaccine that they developed against the COVID and against the coronavirus, we can use in principle the same, we can use the same principle where we take the RNA, but this time not the RNA of the virus, but we take the RNA of of a certain protein that belongs to the myelin, so it belongs to the central nervous system, and we coat it with the same type of lipids that they coat the RNA. But this time, this RNA does not provoke an immune response, but it shuts down the immune response. And we could show in the animal model of multiple sclerosis that this can completely prevent the disease induction in the animals. And moreover, if we have already an ongoing disease, it can shut it down. And even we can shut it down if we, if we, so to say, vaccinate the animals against one myelin protein, but the disease was induced against another one. So in a theoretical situation, but this, you know, I don't want to um, bring too many hopes for too too quickly. This is we are talking about many years from now. We hope to be able to use this technology also to treat MS patients, and this is what we are continuing to do uh, together um, with BioNTech. So one can't really tell now whether it's years or decades until maybe, if it works, we have a vaccination against MS. Is that true? Yes, I mean. You know, those things, I, I'm not, I'm a basic researcher, so I don't have much experience with developed uh, therapy, but I can see around me how long it takes from the moment you uh, identify a possible uh, therapy in animals and until it actually leads to humans. But we are hopeful that we can try to push it. Thank you very much for this very hopeful information. Thank you, Ari. Thank you. Thank you.